How you doing? Welcome back to our WordPress client portal tutorial series. I am super excited to be filming another video uh, and I have some quick things just to talk about here today. Today we're going to be talking about specifically the overall topic is kind of data architecture. There's going to be um, a lot of things that you're going to want to think about as you're building this client portal uh, and some of these uh, announcements and quick little updates and everything like that that I give are going to show you why because just after uploading two videos here, people's minds are already turning. Everybody has their own situation. I'm trying to build this for me, but specifically I want to educate you guys on how you could build so many different things into this because it's modular, it's custom. You can do whatever the hell you want. Um, so there will, be, there will be, as always, I want to say this as quickly as possible, as soon as possible in these videos, there will be chapters down below. Do not uh, forget to look down there. If you're looking for something specific, hopefully you find it down there. You can skip around, do whatever you want. Um, but this is probably going to be a little bit more of a talkative video, at least at first because we need to talk about this. If we don't talk about data architecture at the beginning of our project or close to the beginning, you're obviously gonna need the stuff that we did in the first video with the logins and everything like that. But if we don't think about and really assess some of the pros and cons and different ways we can do things, then you can always fix things later. But I always like to say, if you give like just like 20% more forethought to something like this a lot of times, like something complex, then you can kind of think about all those ideas and flesh out a lot of the issues that you're probably gonna run into. You'll still have issues, it's always gonna happen. But my point is if you, you, if you spend a little bit more time now, you can save exponentially amount of time later. It's just been my experience. So with that said, let's jump over and talk about a couple things that have happened in, just in the interim here of releasing the first couple videos, the overview and the login pages, and then uh, now uh, filming this video here. So the first thing I want to say is that first, thank you guys. Thank you so much for the support so far on the videos. I'm happy that you guys are getting something out of it. If you have any questions, continue to leave them in the comments. Let me know and I will be more than happy to do whatever I can to uh, to assist or build these in. Specifically, I've gotten requests already. I've gotten questions to see if we're going to do things in this series, if we're going to talk about certain stuff. I want to address some of them. Uh, I have addressed them directly, but they're really good requests. So I want to talk about them here real quick. So like one request was like a user submits a listing or info you know, generally via form, and then listing show as pending on a dashboard or somewhere in the portal. And then the ad, and an admin can log in, an admin, sales reps, whatever, can log in and mark them as complete, like kind of just do the business op processing of them kind of manually in that way. 100% possible. Uh, in the previous iteration of the portal, if you do look at some of those other videos, I've already done something extremely similar in a sense of like a user submitted re, like support request. So I, I don't think that the person that requested that is in the same exact, the use case is exactly the same, but the concepts are exactly the same. High level on that is that you're gonna create a post type for whatever it is that they're submitting. You have to give it some sort of identifier, whether it's like a, like a, you know, a request or something like that. And then the, that request will have fields in it. And we'll get to all this, but I'm just giving you the high level, just trying to get you guys, your, your minds ticking here. So like if you have a, let's say a request, custom post type, and then you have custom fields with all the information that you wanna gather. So you take that, then you go to a form plugin. It could be anything, but again, we're gonna use WS form. You go to WS form and you use the post management features. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's probably called that, but whatever it is to, to manage posts. All that means is that you're gonna build a form that has the same fields. They don't even have to be exactly the same. They don't have to be named exactly the same, but they have to map to the proper thing. So if you wanna get like name, uh, license number, and don't do anything sensitive, don't do anything sensitive, but like name, uh, you know, some sort of identification number that's not like, you know, personal identification. Don't ask for people's security, social security numbers and stuff, but like something like that, and then another piece of information, like another question or whatever. You just have to make sure that the form fields you have a place to put all that data in the actual custom post type. And then what you do is you map those fields to the custom post type. And then on the submission of that form, it creates a new uh, new post, or sometimes you can even update an old post, and uh, depending on your use case, and then it just drops it in there. And then from there, you assign that like a status, there'll be a field in there called like pending, completed or whatever, and you assign it a pending status. And then on the front end, you're just showing the pending ones, I know this is super high level, but you're showing the pending ones and then somebody can come in and they can be like, hey, okay, we process this, whatever, market is complete and then it's complete. I will show you how to do something very similar to that as we go through. But um, again, just to give you an idea and everything, that is quite straightforward for the most part. 
Um, there's, again, custom post type fields, form management of that, and then really just displaying the, the, da the data dynamically based off of is it pending or is it complete? And then is it related to that specific user? So that's, uh, and also, real quick aside here, I know this is thrown right in the middle of the video, but I go live every Thursday at 11 a.m. on this channel and um, at, at this current time. And there is a recent live stream, I'll put a card somewhere where I literally went over how to, um, some of the stuff that we'll talk about later in the series uh, about how to relate specifically users to a given like project or a custom post type and all that sort of stuff and show dynamically and everything. But we'll get to that, okay. So let's keep moving. Another one was associated orders and like linking orders to projects um, and then updating project status from the table in the form and list. I did this exact thing in the last build and I'm gonna do it again here just with bricks instead of like Elementor and everything. So basically the idea is you're going to charge somebody for a project or something or some sort of item like that, which we'll talk about here in a second with all the custom post types. And then you link the, you have to associate, relate orders to projects. So there's a relation there. And then you can update the project status. This is kind of a separate thing, but you can have a table of all the projects that are active and you can update those projects literally directly on the front end, you know, in the, in the portal front end of uh, like via table or form, like kind of like a, a amalgamation of that. Um, kind of like a web app. Um, I'll give some, honestly, I'll give some very candid thoughts as we get to that point because I don't necessarily, like you could absolutely use what we're doing here for task management, but depending on how deep you wanna get, it may be just better to use like an actual proper task management web app. Uh, it really depends on the scope though because if it's just high level projects, I do it for that, but I don't know how deep you wanna go. I'll show you how to do tasks and things, but, but um but just keep that in mind. Again, I'm not trying to tell you how to build the exact portal that you wanna build. I'm trying to give you ideas in the way that I build mine and uh, the different things you can do. So there's that. Relations just in general is uh, kind of a new concept for some people, uh, which it, it can be they can be kind of confusing a lot of times, but really you're just relating like a, a post type to another post type. Maybe you're relating users to a post type. And uh, we, I think we, I don't know if we, did, I don't think we did a little bit of that. I did that a little bit on the live stream recently. I don't think we did that in, in the videos and everything yet, but um, we're gonna talk a lot about that moving forward just in general. So there's some questions there. And then just past transactions. Uh, I'm not sure exactly specifically what the person that asked about that was wanting, but with WooCommerce, and I've also been looking into SureCard, but I don't know if we're gonna get there because my, my past portal was built on WooCommerce and I don't personally have any real issues with it. It works fine. Surecart is very interesting and definitely on the come up though, but past transactions specifically, if we're just talking order history, that'll already be on there. And then you could definitely, you could definitely also create a way to see like past projects and things like that. Cause that's super vital. I mean, if you had, if you're building a website for your client in, uh, or I'm sorry, if you're building the portal and you have a client in there and you know, that client has, uh, let's say you're a web designer and whatever, and then you, you've done a bunch of different projects, like built websites for these people and built like other little, uh, you know, other little small statement of work type things throughout the your relationship with them, you want them to be able to go back and see all that, just like you would want to see your Amazon order history and all the data there. Definitely possible, definitely gonna talk about it. Okay, so all that stuff out of the way, announcements, requests, and everything like that. Like I said, thank you guys so much for the continued support. Uh, let's get moving on this next one. So where we're at is we built the login pages. So you think people can log in, create an account, stuff like that. And we'll probably return to that as we continue to tidy things up, but the features and functionality and everything works there. There's also content restrictions. So somebody can't just access like the internal pages, like the dashboard and everything like that without logging in or registering. They have to have an account. So we, 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 take, we took care of that. Again, if you need more clarity on some of those things, we can circle back, but watch that first video if you haven't uh, for that. What we, what we need to talk about next, I feel like the next most logical thing here is Kind of the dashboard, but really the dashboard is kind of like your homepage on a website, right? There's, if you can't really build a dashboard until you have other things that are gonna go on the dashboard. Because the dashboard is a, is, a, is a hub for the rest of the items on the website, okay? And in our case, in the portal. So what we need to know, and, and really this is, again, like I said, this is a very subjective video. I'm not gonna be able to tell you how to build your portal. You need to think about it. I'm gonna give you as many ideas as possible um, and as many, um, specifically the data architecture, not necessarily all features right now. And we need to talk about how to do that at a high level, and then we can jump in and we can do some of it. 
So understanding and deciding on relations and features and things like that. The first thing that you have to start with, you absolutely have to start with this, is users and user roles. You don't need to have every user role created. You don't need to like fully flesh this out, but you need to have an idea. The reason you need to start here is because it is a portal. People are logging in. Like this is like an, a vital piece of this. If, if it was just a website where, you know, it was like a more of a marketing website where you had custom post types and everything, you don't need to worry about users. But when there's users involved, it, things get a little more complex, not too much more. They're kind of just like a special, I don't really know if they're technically a post type, but they're their own thing, right? They're their own, um, we'll call it just like an entity. They have effectively a, a post type with a login and everything like that uh, related to it. But the reason you have to do this is because people are logging in. They're going to have passwords. They're going to have login information, things like that. We've already built these, uh, you know, registration and everything like that. You need to start there because it's a very vital part of this. They literally cannot, you cannot access this website without being a user. So we got to start there. What kind of roles do we want? Well, you definitely need an admin, which is probably yourself or maybe other teammates and things like that. But somebody's going to be the admin. That's easy. You know, we're going to be in the back end. We know what we're doing. We're, we're doing all this stuff. The next one is something that you may or may not need, and it is team members. And think of team members like this. Think of an actual, think, think of an actual, think of like a, like a full blown web app type thing. If you were going to build one of those, you would probably have different views for who, depending on the user role that is logging in. There is probably, potentially, at least in our case, there is somebody that is logging in, like I said, as an admin. They're going to see everything. They can touch every single feature. They can change every single setting. They can break the website. They can make it better. They can make improvements, whatever. Okay. So that's us. Easy. Team members would be more of like a sales rep or somebody that is probably not, depending on, depending on your feature set and what you want to do and everything like that, because I think WooCommerce might make it a little different if you, difficult, depending on if you want to do that. But let's say for 90% of the stuff, other than like the e-com side of things, you could definitely create a situation where you have a, we'll call it a view, right? Where team members can see and interact with different things differently than your clients would, like your client contacts. Also, we'll get into the semantics of whole client contact thing because it really, it really it boggles my mind. We need, to, we need to decide on something there. But your customers, let's just say customers for right now team members versus customers. Think of it as when they log in, they're going to see different things because they are privileged to different items of the website and different like roles and, and, and things that they can do, right? So the question you have to ask, and again, if it's just you right now, you don't need to worry about this, but if you have other team members, do I want them in the back end of WordPress doing different things, which you could, which we could talk about that too. I mean, you could, you can lock down and restrict things in the back end. But my point is if do you want them there, or do you want them in a front end? Do you want them in a front end of that is more like a client experience, but gives them more things? Maybe they have just special pages where there's literally like WS forms that have more post management features and they can play around with that. You, I would actually say that's more like kind of phase two, in my opinion, unless you absolutely need team members in there right away. What we're going to talk about, we're definitely going to talk about first is the client part because this is a client portal. And I'm assuming a lot of us probably don't need, have a need for team members like a team member's view, but I did get that uh, question kind of from somebody, and I was like, that's a really interesting thought that I personally haven't even done yet, but I, you know, the, the concepts, again, are very similar. So we may get to that later. Not today, but you need to think about that. The more important thing is client contacts, and specifically, again, customers or subscribers, customers before they subscribe to anything, and then um, you know, uh, just overall people that are logging in, like the actual users, individual users that are logging in. That are, your, that are associated with your clients. We'll talk about this the structure there more, but you're gonna need to have something for them. You're gonna need to have a user role dedicated to them that has certain permissions. And again, it's probably the customer one if you're using WooCommerce, which is fine, or the subscriber one if you're using like just regular uh, WordPress or something else. But you need to understand that and you need to have, you need to have an understanding of those are our, that user role and they see and interact with the website in a certain way. Okay. The next thing is, and actually I'm going to switch over now because this is going to give us a, a kind of a slightly better view. So I kind of put this together. It's a little, it's a little shoddy here, but I apologize, but this will make more sense. This is super, again, we're throwing stuff at the wall here as far as like what we're thinking about, how we're processing this and everything's going to come together as we continue to build the pieces. But I want to give you the information on the high end first. 
when we talked about users there, as you can see. The line, each one of these things, we'll say, let's start here. Each one of these boxes is a custom post type slash like a user, you know, a user post type, whatever you want to call, however you want to call that. Each one of these things is like a, an, a type of data, like an object of data that obviously has instances within it of like an instance of a project, an instance of a task, everything like that. But they're custom post types, more or less, okay? When we're talking about the data architecture, it's in that way. We talked about users two minutes ago. The first question that I would ask myself is, or one of the questions as I'm starting is, can users have multiple companies slash websites? Can projects belong to multiple users? And I'll get into what I mean by that. The, the a, a big question that you have to ask yourself off the bat is, Honestly, what are you, how are you building this? Like, why are you building this portal? Meaning, and, and what do you do? Who are you building it for? Who's your main, who's your main client? What's your business like? Again, I'm the one making these videos, so I'm just going to use mine as the example. I have a web design business that I'm building this client portal for. Okay. We are basically a digital marketing agency. We provide web creation, website creation, which is the whole pro. I call it website creation because it is design, it's development, it's UX, UI. Okay, so website creation, think of that from zero to website, okay? Then, or redesign or whatever, but website creation is one offer. Then we have website management, which is your website care plan, hosting, security, whatever the hell you want to call it, okay? But it's it's that thing, it's a subscription. The first one was like maybe multiple payments, maybe, but it's ultimately like a start and an end. The and then with uh, website management, we have a subscription-based model where we're providing things every month and they're they're paying every month, okay? Uh, also, other things that we're, specifically my agency is, is getting into is like SEO, pay-per-click, things like that. Most of the time, those are gonna be probably subscription-based, you know, whatever. And then the other piece of it would be not necessarily website creation, but very similarly tied to that, just one-off projects. Think about it like as you built a website for somebody and now they, you're, they're on your website management plan, but you need to charge them, right? So you need to charge them for, you know, they want a new page or they want, you know, a new uh, section of the website, or new, some, new, some, some new dynamic content or whatever. So those would be like one-off projects. I'm just giving you an idea how I interact with my clients. The next thing that I would, so think about that first. Think about how you interact, what's your offer and everything like that at a, at a high level because that's gonna play into some of the things like the products and the projects and, and those different types of things. And then another question I would ask is, who are your clients? Now that's a weird question. I don't mean, I don't mean like the industry. I don't mean the specifics that, that like, you know, the names and stuff like that. What I mean is, are you B2B, which you're pro you probably are, but like, are you B2B, are you B2C in one way? Do you need a layer in between the users and the projects? Meaning, if I'm looking at this, this outline here, okay? The way that I process this in my business, and again, adapt it to yours. If you have a question, let me know if you want a recommendation, but I, again, we're not doing this you know, we're not doing this live in person, so I can't, I can't do it right now. But the way that I process this, you have to have users. No doubt about it. Somebody's logging in. I want the user to be a person. I want the user to literally, I mean, again, you can't, you can't police for this every single time. But the way that you pitch this is I want the user to be a person. I want it to be John Doe at mycompany.com. And I want the first name, last name of the actual person. I want a representative of the company to be the user. Okay. I don't want them to use like some sort of like weird shit where it's like in the first name and last name field of the user, they put like, you know, company name or something. You know what I mean? Like whatever their company name is. I don't want it. I don't want that because that's not how the, first of all, it's not how the user thing is supposed to work. You're not supposed to put company names in your first name and last name fields in WordPress. It's supposed to be a person. It's first name and last name. That's the first thing. The second thing though, is that I just in the short five years, six years that I've, that I've done WordPress website design and, and all these different types of projects like this. I have already had clients just in the business thing, the portal, yes, but in just in the business framework that I've that I've dealt with. I've had many people that we'll call it John Doe has John Doe is associated. John Doe comes to me for website one. Then he comes to me for another website. Then he comes to me for a third website. So John Doe as a user as an individual is paying me for multiple websites, okay? Now, it depends on how you wanna go with it, your structure-wise, but my point is that 
I can't, I don't, it doesn't make sense logically to have something where user John Doe is directly related to the projects that John Doe or the products that John Doe is, is, is giving me, is paying me for, that I'm providing for him. It doesn't make any sense. There needs to be, in my mind, a middle relation. And if you're not understanding relations, just like follow the lines here. And I'm, I'm trying to explain kind of the way that my mind works about this. That user, John Doe, has to have a middle relation. And that middle relation, he has to be related to something. And then we have to relate that thing to all the other stuff. I mean, remember, we are going to be showing projects and products and all this sort of stuff, depending on client. If you're person, if the contact that you're talking to, if the if the individual representative or the user that you're talking to has multiple websites or multiple companies that they're associated with, then then you're then 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 now you're like confused because if this wasn't here, then now it's like users to projects and users to products. And it's like, well John Doe has like company one, company two, and company three. And I'm not exactly sure what product and projects these are all for. So I think you have to have something like this. Unless you literally just deal directly with people and you don't care about, uh, unless you literally de deal directly with individuals and you don't care about that, uh, I think you have to have something like that. Now, here's where it gets a little sticky, and I'm honestly going to delete this clients thing because I personally hate seeing the word clients because it's, to me, it's quite confusing, the, the terminology there. I like users, and if anything, we could say that users are clients, but I, I just don't like the word clients Again, when you're dealing with this, I'm al I'm already screwing it up. I apologize with the semantics. I'm trying to get to a place where we can just kind of be straight with the with the wording because language is really important with with stuff like this. So users should be individuals at the core of it. Doesn't matter what else you call them, I guess, but they need to be users. They those users are probably going to be associated with a company or or a product like a like a like a product type, which is why websites is written there. At minimum you probably need something like this, okay? And I would actually probably recommend for most people, this is kind of how you're gonna go, but I'm gonna give you the, the other way that I've, that I've done this in the past. Your users are probably gonna be individuals, and then when you write up a contract, you're not doing a contract with the user, you're doing a contract with a company, most likely, I would say, right? Adapt it to your own thing. But every time I do business, I do business with companies. I'm a B2B business. I'm a business, I'm doing, I'm providing business services to other businesses. So on my contracts, I do have a person. I do have like a CEO or a representative that ultimately signs it. But my actual client, my actual person that I'm interfacing with is a company. And I wanna make sure that's a, that, that's a very important distinguisher when you're doing this because if you, your users are gonna be related to those companies. And now what we can have is we can have John Doe and he could have company one. And company one can have projects. And then this is going to be a bad representation here because I'm just going to do this on the fly like this. But then you could have company one, company two, and then you could have, you know, a line between users and company here, like company one, company, you know, users to company one to projects of company one. Then you could have users to company two and then projects of company two. I hope that's kind of making sense. But my point is, you, I think you have to have a middleman there. You can't just relate users to projects unless your business somehow like, you know, is fine with that. But you need to have something there. Now, are we going to call it companies? Let's talk about that for a quick second. I don't like calling it companies, personally. I actually like calling it websites. And the reason I like calling it websites is because I build websites and I only build websites. And every single project, there's actually probably a better way even to think about this if you reverse engineer it. When you do a project, like, and by project, we're getting deep into like the, the thought process here. This is obviously like a, even more of a business ops conversation. When you, when you talk about a project, what is your definition of project? My definition of project is a scope of work. So like my, my scope of work document, if it's a proposal for $25,000 website, that is a project. It's one scope of work. They signed and they're going to pay me one payment or two payments or whatever it is, but that's a project. Okay. If they, uh, if we finish that project and three months down the line, they say, Hey, I want uh, you know, a new post type with a new page, arch archive page and a single, I want to put a blog on there. I want those three items. I give them a scope, a statement of work document. Did I say scope of work early. I give them a statement of work document because we don't need to propose them on like a new brand new thing like that. They were just, just doing that. I'll make more videos on this as well. But that, that is a project to me. Each one of those documents where they're signing and they're saying, I'm going to pay X over whatever period of time. That's a project to me. Okay. 
And we'll talk more about how projects relate to products, but that's a project to me. My point is each one of those projects have a representative that's signing, but they also are related to a, com to a, a company or in my mind, they're related actually to a website. Like I don't do anything other than websites. So either you need to have companies here or honestly, in my case, I'm probably gonna have websites here because that's the way that I have it before. That's the way I have it on the other, the older build. And I do like that structure because now what you can have is you can have company.com, company1.com, company2.com, company3.com. And every single project that you have is gonna be related to one of those domains. If I made a list of every single project that I've ever done to this point even, every single one of them, the, the like the primary identifier, the primary thing that all those projects line up to is they have like an actual, and when I say website, I mean literally like a URL basically, a domain name that they are affiliated with or associated with or related to, okay? So that's the way that I'm gonna do it. So the way that it's ultimately gonna look like is that I go out, I get a lead for companydomain.com, okay, whatever. So I'm building that website. Also, another random aside here, every single website that I have is going to have a website management plan tied directly to that. It, that's basically a one-to-one -one relationship. We're not, it's not an actual real relationship, I'm just saying that the way that most people sell websites is I'm at this domain name, we are managing that website with hosting, security, and all that sort of stuff, the care plan. Care plan is one care plan to one domain. Normally, I've never seen it done in a different way. So my point being is that if you think about it on that realm, the, the actual domain name or the website in this case is the, the unique thing, the key to all of the, the, the relations in a way. So I'm gonna do websites. You can try companies, you can do whatever. Um, the way it works is that you get a new lead. The lead comes in and we'll worry, we'll worry about the deep onboarding process. I really wanna talk about that because it's gonna be different for everyone later, but the lead would come in, it would be a company domain name.com. Then you would, you would create that website on the, you create that website post type and everything like that on the, the client portal, right? So you put in the information, which we didn't get to yet, we'll talk about that. And then you send them the thing to get them to, to be a user. You, you relate their user to their website. And then that's the key. I'm trying to give you a visualization of how it's gonna end up looking. And I'll, I'll actually, I will show you the actual portal example, the old portal example here in a second, is I have it up, I have it up on this tab here. The user is gonna be related, the user or users, maybe there's like a team of three people for the website that you're working with and they wanna all be related. Well, we can do that. We can have three users or whatever related to that one singular website. We could also have multiple websites related to the same user if they wanna do that. If you have a client and they've, you know, they have three businesses and you're doing the websites for all those businesses, there is a separation there. You could, and if, if it was me, I would probably have three different logins because I don't wanna commingle different things, but if that business owner just wants to have, hey, I just wanna have one login and I wanna be able to see all my websites, you can do that too. So that's how that'll work. You'll have one user login and they'll be able to see three websites. The, any websites that they're associated with, they will see. That's how it is. And, and you set up all those relationships and we'll do all that. And then similarly, if they're, if they're associated with website A, they're only gonna be able to see the projects associated with website A. If they're, only, if they're associated with websites A and B, they're gonna be able to see the projects for websites A and B. And it's all gonna work and be great. And then it continues down the line uh, and we'll talk about products and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, let me give you, I haven't, I don't think I did this in the, in the beginning video. So let me give you a quick, a quick little overview, a super high level of an, a, the actual portal that we are currently using, okay? So you can see the way that I laid this out and I really do love the structure. It's just built in Elementor and there are some things that I'd like to upgrade. So, but overall though, this is, I'm trying to give you a visualization because I've been talking a lot and I appreciate you sticking with me on, on what's actually gonna happen here at the end of the day. Cause it, it will, I don't know if it'll look like this, but it'll be very similar in, in structure in a lot of ways, at least for our business. This right here, as an example, is generated. I am logged in as my, it's an admin user, but ultimately just a user, we'll say. Let's assume that I was a client in this case. Every one of my clients, their name comes up there, info, whatever, and then if they have one website, it shows one website. If they have no websites, it shows, oh, you don't have any websites yet. If it's if it ha if they have three websites, they all show up here. Okay, that's one small example, right? And then if you go over to websites, okay, and that's why in my case, again, it's that's the unique thing. You could say companies, I guess, if you were, 
if you were dealing with a different type of portal, but in my case, it's it's websites. If you, if you again, if you want different thoughts there, I'll give you some recommendations on on how to play it, depending on your your structure. But in my case, it's websites. So then there's a uh, thing here. I don't want to go too far down because there is other information on this page, uh, client stuff and all that. But this page now, okay, is your websites page. Now, if I'm logged in and I'm a client and I have multiple websites, I'm going to see this is a loop and this is only showing the websites that are associated with me. So in this case, it's just the find a tech website, right? And it has like active projects, complete a project. We'll, we'll talk about all this. Don't get, don't get crazy yet with all that. Okay. But the, the thing is, if I didn't have any projects, it wouldn't show any, if it, it was just this, then it would, it would be this. The reason I'm showing you this, okay, is because you need to understand and fully figure out what your websites is going to be. If you're just like me, maybe it'll be websites. If it's not websites though, if you're doing something else, then you need to figure that out. You could call it projects. You could call it projects and you could just list all the projects. But in my mind, especially from my experience, users might have multiple bigger things that they're associated with, right? If they have multiple websites in this case or multiple companies or whatever, then they're going to want some separation there to some degree. And uh, this just makes the most sense for me. So that's what we're doing. Hope that helps a little bit. Let's get back to this uh, diagram real quick. Just tidy up a couple things. So we get to this point here where we're talking about projects and products. And I have literally been racking my brain off camera here for the last like 30 to 45 minutes because I have been doing this one way and it's worked well, but I really want to improve and also give you guys some different ideas. So I kind of reframed some of these little slides here and I'm going to go through it. Uh, bear with me. If you pick one of the options that I don't end up kind of picking here, let me know. If you want more clarity on some of this, let me know. But I do want to kind of like wrap this section of this up because I want to make sure that you understand the data architecture and you make your decision. But at the end of the day, I'm just trying to give you these ideas because whatever you decide is going to be pertinent to your own business. And I'm just putting in, like I said, putting a little bit of time in, more time in on the forefront because hopefully I'll think of all the different things that could possibly go wrong. Not all of them, but a lot of them now. And then I won't have to deal with them in the future. All right, with all that said, let me explain what I've been thinking about here with these illustrations and some th interesting things that I found. I have been doing this one way and I will come to that because it's similar to the way that I think I'm going to end up doing it. But that was what we've been seeing here. Okay. I added a couple little relations in here. We'll talk about that in a second, but I've been doing this one way. Here's the reason that I stopped and thought about this for like 45 minutes is because depending on who you are, how you operate and everything like this, this might be something that you want to try. And I'm going to explain exactly what it is. The main thing is with projects and products in the situation that I'm in, I could even see myself using this, but I don't know because it kind of does limit you moving forward. What, I'm, what you're looking at here is users and websites work exactly the same, but instead of websites being linked to something else called projects, like a new custom post type called projects, it is instead linked to the products, like the main products custom post type that WooCommerce gives you. Now, there's a lot that goes into that because I don't, you know, products starts to get confusing. It's really more like services or projects because everything would be in there. It would be literally a title of a product, the description, the cost of it, the, it would be the thing that you're adding to orders. So it would be a line item. It would also though be, it would also have to have the fields that you need for the projects, like for, to, to manage a project. It would have to have the, uh, you know, the status, it would have to have maybe a completion date or a start date. Uh, it would have to have all that stuff. You'd have to have custom fields. You'd have to, you know, go to jet engine built in and add custom fields to that. That's an option. You could do it that way. What are the limitations that I found? Well, the limitation that I found is in that use case, it's not a hundred percent, but most of the time those products are going to be associated with orders. And if they're not associated with orders, then that, that might still work. But my point is like a lot of, maybe a lot of you out there are just charging monthly or something like that. Like one of these subscription models, right? It's like, you want to know, you want people to submit projects maybe. And they're, maybe you don't want them to submit the product thing because you're not going to, you're not billing per se per project or per task or whatever. You're billing just like generally subscription-based. So this isn't really going to work for you. It might work for me because everything that I do is kind of can be tied back to a to a, a specific like service product 
project thing and it all has a, a number associated with it and that would kind of work. And then every single one of those is related to an order in some way, shape or form. And that would, that would kind of make sense, but it does kind of pigeonhole you. The other thing that you have to realize is that if you do it this way, every product that you create, every single one of these um, products that you create in here, if you go to all products, there would be a list, like a monster long list in here, because every single, when you create a product, you're actually creating a project. I'll explain why it has like donations and stuff here in a second, but like every single one of them would be that way. So if you're seeing why it says donations, it's because I also looked up how to re at that point, it, they're not products anymore. They're not, they're projects or services. They're definitely not products because that's going to be too confusing. So I was thinking, how do you rename the, you know, is there a way to easily rename like this? So I'm not getting confused. And then is there a way to rename the, uh, the slug even just in case, obviously you can do that with the permalinks. If you're in the, uh, if you're in, if you go back here, the bottom of permalinks, you could rename it from, I, didn't, I renamed it to project just as an example, you could rename it to project. You can name it to, you know, services, whatever you wanted. You could rename it to, um, anything there. And then I found this little piece of tech, this piece of uh, code here where I don't know if this is really the best way to do it, but they just translated all the instances of products to, in this case, donation. And I just, I just threw that in there just to, just as an example. So now you could say services or you could say uh, project there. Okay. Well now we have, we have basically, we haven't changed it though, because if you look, this still says product up here in the, in the URL bar, like it's the, 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 then there's no way because that's how WooCommerce is designed to work. There's no way you would actually fully change it. So now you're like, eh, that's kind of like a half baked solution. I don't really know if I want to do that. You know, that's kind of weird, but it is an, I feel like it is an option. There, there's probably other things that you would have to deal with, but I feel like it is an option. So to wrap up on that, on this option here, this option of the, the products, literally the main products thing being your project management piece as well. It is definitely faster. It is definitely like more efficient in a way. The reason it's more efficient is when somebody wants a new website. Okay. They want let's say they want a new website and they want you to do something else for them. Okay. There's at least two line items that you're going to have to charge them for probably. So you're going to have to create those as products. Then you're going to have to add those to an order. Then you're going to have to have them take care of the order. Now though, instead of going and having to create a project as well, because you created a product, you created the order, you created a product, you added the products to the order by creating an order. Now my workflow is I have to go and create a project too. That's not, or multiple projects. And that's not like ideal. Uh, cause it's a lot of clicking. It's a lot of things to manage. So I don't necessarily know if it's good or bad or indifferent. I hope I'm not confusing the shit out of you guys, but I'm trying to give you some ideas here again on the forefront before you, before you dive in. So that is kind of the, the situation here is you could go this way, but I don't, I, I just, I think there's unforeseen consequences, especially if not every single one of the things that you do is attached to an order. If you're, it, I mean, honestly, you should probably just completely negate this. If at any time you're going to be like, I, I want people to be able to submit things and I'm not necessarily charging them directly for that line item. This way is just a little less flexible. It's a little less clicks. I don't know what it's going to do to the database. If you have literally thousands, at some point, pot potentially thousands of products, cause you can't reuse them because each one of them is its own entity in a way, it's its own project. So every single time you're doing that, you're creating a new product, which is not ideal because that's not something that I like. So let's move on. I hope that was uh, somewhat under you know, understandable. Okay. Let's move on to this. This is exactly what I'm doing right now. Okay. I have users. I've related to websites. Websites are create are related to projects, one to many. So one website can have many projects, but projects can't have like one project can't have many, uh, like websites. It's, it's like, you know, like that way. Um, and then with projects, what I do is somebody comes in and they say, okay, I want, uh, you know, I want these two items. I want you to build me a homepage and I want you to do some dynamic data. And traditionally what I've done is I go to products, I'm creating like the actual order. So I have to go to products first and I have to create line item one, line item two. Then I go to orders and I create those orders because there is no good way. And let me get this stuff out of here real quick. There's no good way to create like almost like a, if you create an invoice in like QuickBooks or something, okay. You still have to have like some sort of product or service. That's ultimately what those line items are. And it's really no different here. You have to create, you have to create a product, right? 
So if you go in and you have you have to create like item one, item two, and then you have to go to orders and you have to create that order, right? I'm gonna get rid of this here for a second and this, we don't need any of that. So you have to go in and you have to create this order and I've already created one here. So it's like you have to add, you know, whatever these line items are, add items, da, da, da. You could, you could try this add fee thing, but that's not what you want. And there's no way to know, like, it's that's a fee. That has nothing to do with, like, those actual items that you're doing and, like, the, the you know, the way that you can kind of handle that. So I've been doing that. I create a product and then I add it to the order and then I send them the order and then they come back and they, they you know, they pay or whatever. And now, I, or, I, or I process the transaction. Now I have to create a project though too, which is just a little redundant because most of the time the things on the product, this is why I thought of that other solution, are, are, are also projects in a way. But at the same time, if I ever had a situation where I needed to track a project that wasn't, that wasn't associated with an order, you could probably still do it over here, but it would just, it would now, it would just be kind of like really confusing because it says product and, and, and there's just a lot of other weirdness kind of going on. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it with one caveat though. Here's what I'm going to do. Traditionally, like I said, if you looked in the product library of, if you looked at all products on the current, on the current client portal that I have, there's a ton in there. And the reason there's a ton in there is because every time I'm like duplicating and I'm cloning them, what I'm going to do this time and I'm pretty sure because I tested it, is I'm going to change one thing. I'm going to do boilerplate products and services. And here's here's the concept. I will do it for you here. So I already have kind of a, a little bit of a test case going because I was like testing it. So I'm going to go to products, okay? <clears throat> Beautiful example is website management. It is a subscription plan, which we don't have subscriptions on here yet, which we'll, we'll get to and everything. But if you're using WooCommerce and you want to charge people for website management, here's what I'm thinking. If you go and you create a product and you call it website management, okay? So we'll go in here. And we'll say, you know, you could say whatever it is, whatever. And you could even do something like this too. Like you could say like tier, tier one. Okay. Here's honestly what I would do. If I, if I end up getting to tiers, which I don't really have tiers currently, there's kind of just like one main plan, but let's say you had tier one. Okay. So now you have, you have tier one, you set this up. Don't worry about this project status thing down here because I was playing around with something else. You have tier one. Okay. This is a product that somebody wants to purchase. You need to set this up for them on the product thing. You set this up however you want. You put in like a product image or something like that, okay? You set up all this stuff. They're not gonna see this. They're not gonna see the, um, they're, they're not gonna see the the actual uh, shop or anything like that. There's unless, unless you, again, want one-off items or anything like that, they're not gonna need any of that. You can come down here and you can say like for a website category, you can say uh, management. If I could spell, okay, thank you. You could say website management, okay, and then add new. You come down here, you click virtual. If it was a subscription product, obviously you would configure some other things, but for the sake of this, we're just doing this. And you, and then here's the thing. If you click, if you put a price in, like $1,500 or something like that, and then you add this to an order and you lower the price, it's gonna say a discount by default. You don't want that. Just make it zero. Okay, stick with me, just make it zero. We have a product, standard product. Okay, cool, great. Let's go back to products for a second. Let's do another example real quick. Let's say, uh, what we'll do is we'll duplicate this real quick and we'll just say, we'll say tier two, okay? And we'll get rid of this, great. And if these are all the same price though, like if you, if you, are, if you are gonna make these all the same price, you could put the price in. This is a bad example because this is probably something that's on your uh, on your thing every time on your on your website and like maybe it's all the same price so you could for this but I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you a different use case right now so now maybe you say okay well we're gonna line item this out on this order and one of the things that we're gonna do is you you UI design for you okay so it's gonna be virtual the price is gonna be zero uh, you could have probably cloned that other thing but I'm gonna just go like this and grab all this stuff again then I'm gonna add another category as well I'm gonna say website creation in my sense, because that is a product that is under that category in my structure. Okay. Then we're going to go back to products one more time and we're going to just do one more and then I'm going to show you some stuff. So UI design, we're going to clone that. There's another item. There's there's a few more items obviously in website creation. Actually, let me go this first. There we go. And let me get rid of that. Okay. So now we have UX design as well as a product and we're going to virtual and we have all the same things that da, 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 whatever. Cool. Okay. I don't think I actually created that category, but that's not pertinent. Okay. So here we go. Now, if we go back to the products one more time, after we've created all that, we have UI design, UX design, you could have uh, copywriting in there, you could have whatever, all right? But these are your base services. Like think of them as your line items that you would show on an order, okay? 
your website management, obviously support, uh, you know, like support or, you know, management things that are subscription based and those would be on there. And you could even put like, you know, 1000, you know, 1000 a month or whatever, whatever the hell you have. Okay. But UX and UI. Okay. What if we want now to create an order? Some, we, we gave somebody a proposal on that proposal. We had UX design, UI, like line item down. And I'll show you my, my uh, proposal as well, just to kind of get an example of, of what I'm talking about here. But if you line item your things out and you don't just like throw up, I mean, you could even just say website creation and do the same process, but I'm trying to give you a deeper, a deeper idea here. If you go like this, okay, if you have these here and then you go to orders, right? And you say, add a new order. So somebody came in, you gave them a proposal and had a bunch of line items on them. Two of them were UX, UI, and you know, they each had a price on them. You now are going to create that order within your portal. You could do it like this. You could do it more vague if you want, if you're, you know, if you, if you don't want to show the, the proposal, I mean, you could, I'm going to attach the proposal to this, you know, like they're going to know that this order had this proposal on and everything like that. But if you want to do it like this, what you do is you add the products. And then you can say UX, search for it, and then design here and say UI and add, okay? Now we made them zero. Well, that's not good. So we need to edit the item. And we're editing like this instance of the product. We're not editing the whole thing. We're editing this instance. So let's say that UX design was, I don't know, like some random number, okay? And then let's say that UI design was some other random number, okay? Save. Now, what we've done is we've lined item this out on the order so we can actually see those two things. They were products, but they were boilerplate templated products, basically, and we just brought them in and we line item them, line, line item them, I can't speak, line itemed them and gave them their own price specific for this project, for this, for this order, rather, okay? For this individual, that is this individual, this company website that, that we're doing this for, right? And then if we go to like customer payment page, obviously it's gonna give you the stuff up here, but you can see now, this is what your people will be greeted with. The, ideally, they would see this on their proposal and then they would click on order and they would see the exact same thing. So that's the idea there. And then if we go to products, just to check, right? We go back to products and we see that our main boilerplate products have not been touched. I actually believe that this is probably the best way to do this because it doesn't, we didn't get to the project section because it is it is separate. You wanna bill for the thing and then you wanna build like the project piece off it. Because honestly too, the more that I think about the projects don't necessarily have to completely align with what you're doing. They could, but they're not gonna necessarily completely line up with the way that you're billing people or the way that you've structured their, their actual order and their proposal. There's a little bit There's a little bit of a nuance there for certain. It is probably better to handle that. And the other thing is, if you do take your, main project management outside of this, then you don't need it. it. It just simplifies it a lot more. So I'm definitely going to do this from now on. I'm not going to be, what I used to do in the past, like I said, is I would write website management and I'd write literally the domain name right here. I do want to do one other thing, but I'll explain that in a second. I would write the domain name right here. And then like, I would have 15 website management domain name like things, and they would all be clones of each other. It's not necessary. Just do it like this. So you can so you can manually change like the different prices as they order them, but the actual product could be the same if you have some level of consistency in the way that you service your clients. Okay, if not, you could do it all independently as well. But this is a really neat trick. I feel like that. The one other thing that I'll say real quick, and we will get to later, but like I said, I want to try to put a bow on this data management stuff, this data ar uh, architecture and everything. Is the one thing I don't like is when let's say you have a user and that user has multiple websites all in the same you know, user account. That means that their notification emails are probably all going to come to the same email address. Okay. Well, if they have website management, it doesn't matter tier one or tier two, let's just say like they have three websites and all, cause I have this exact situation in my business. They have website management. They have tier one on all of their three websites that they own in the same, you know, user portal account. Okay. Well, they're getting three different emails saying like this order went through for business one, two, and three. Well, when, I, when they see the email, I want to make sure that they know, because it's coming to the same person and the same user, I want to make sure that they know that this instance of the website management is tied to this website. Now, it works on the back end, but making that work in WooCommerce is probably going to be something like where we have to add a custom field and make sure that's shown up, that shows up in the 
uh, in the in the email at minimum, or change the you know change the the header of the email or something to the you know your invoice for xyz.com, something like that. But we'll get to that. But that's my point: is the only the only issue that I foresee is if the products don't say that in them because they're more templated products that you're pulling in and just adding the price to. That's a little bit different. Something that we'll get to. But um, I really like this approach. Again. Here are those, uh, you know, you can kind of pause the video back when I was talking about these to, to pick the uh, the kind of the structure that you want. But I'm going to go with this one because it does lend itself to a lot more flexibility, even though there's a little bit more redundancy there. But I do think that ultimately there is, there's there's ways around that. And this is, this is the optimal approach for me. I don't know. You let me know what you guys think uh, if I'm just crazy for going this deep into this or whatever. But I'm just trying to give you guys the options. Okay, we have talked a ton in this video. It is getting long. I wanna to try to wrap up this part and we're actually gonna wrap this video up here. I know it was all talking, I apologize. Like I said, hopefully you looked through the timestamps or whatever. The rest of the videos will not be like this because we actually do need to do the work, but this was really important, I feel like. Uh, hopefully you got some value out of this. At least it, you know maybe it sparked some thoughts in your mind here, but let's talk about the last little bits of this because that was the hard part. That was the really important part that I really think that you need to consider because if you don't do that now, you're gonna be just annoyed later. So the other thing is tasks related to projects, right? So if we're going with this approach, we're gonna have these projects and they're and again, it's it's subjective. Like what is a project? What is a task? How do you want to set that all up? But in my mind, a project would be like a big initiative. So we're gonna create this website, okay? Well, all right, so we're gonna create this website it's, and it's gonna have some level of status. So the client knows this is when it starts, this is when it's scheduled to end. When it's over, this is when it actually ended. While it's going on, we're gonna know if we're at in review, you know, in progress, whatever, da 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 da. And then you could build in a couple other things with that, depending on what your needs are. You could even do probably a specific link in a way, if you wanted to, to upload files to you know Google Drive or whatever. You could do that on like a global setting for the whole website, but you could also do that uh, for project based if you want. I mean, it depends on what you guys need and what we want to do. Honestly, for me, I've done it where it's just a shared Google Drive link, as you saw over on the client on the other client portal. It was like, um, actually, I can kind of show you right here if you go to websites, um, and we take a look at this. So, like a shared Google Drive link. So you put the Google Drive link in, uh, in the you know custom post type specific to that website. That, I mean, again, it, whether it's a website or project or what have you, in my in my mind, it's always a website because you know these are the files for that website, regardless of how many projects we have for them. And then obviously you can show all their documents here and everything. And the documents more specifically, the documents are probably going to be related to, there's, act, there, there's not going to be documents, a document post type, because it doesn't really make sense. The documents are going to be uploaded directly to most likely the projects or maybe the orders, or maybe both. I mean, it really depends on where you need a document. If you need a proposal, it's probably going to be an order because that's where it's going to be. Or, or if you decide that you want to do that as a project, that's where it's going to be. But definitely for projects, you know, if you if you get to like statement of work where like you say what you're going to do, but you're not billing them specifically for that, that's possibly a project. You just, I mean, it is very difficult for me to build this to build this story with everybody in mind. There's just too many too many different options. But my point is like we, I'm going to show you how to do these, and you decide what it's best uh, for your way. Subtasks and tasks and subtasks. You can easily relate projects to tasks to subtasks and create a situation where there's a grandchild relationship. I actually made a video, but I never I never released it. I'm going to show you how to do that here, where if you wanted to have projects, tasks, and subtasks, you could do that. Uh, I wouldn't go deeper than that. And like I said, even that is kind of a little deep for what we're trying to do here because it's probably going to be, I'm being genuine. There's a lot of benefits to the client portal. Project management at that deep of a level is probably not one of them unless you have something maybe predefined. But honestly, I'm gonna throw a random thing in here for you. Total monkey wrench into the whole projects or specifically more of the task thing. What if there's a way to manage your team in ClickUp or somewhere else and show those tasks in the portal? I don't. I literally don't know. I'm just thinking that maybe there's a way to embed that even at the, at the least, at the worst case. I'm just saying like having all those projects and tasks and subtasks in your WordPress database is one, probably clunky, two, a little concerning because there's a lot going on there. But um, the other value here I think is is tremendous. So we'll, we'll dive into that at some point, but that's straightforward. I mean, they're not related to anything else. It's just like a little ladder there. 
The other, the other things are kind of standalone. Uh, agreements. So agreements is kind of interesting because there's this concept that I thought of for onboarding. And if you had, if you had a, if you had to have your people sign agreements, right? Maybe there's a way to do it where there's like a nice onboarding process where they're, they're signing things like they're signing your MSA and everything like that while they're on the, the portal, while they're logging into the portal and everything. Depends on how you structure your business. The more I think about it, it probably makes more sense for them to, you definitely want them to sign that before they pay because they definitely need to, they definitely need to sign it before they pay. So if, you're, if your process was proposal, sign the proposal to, to authorize and then sign the MSA to, to work with you and then pay, there's possibly a way that you integrate that into your, into your system. I'm gonna give you a different way though that a colleague of mine have thought about for a long time is let's say you run a subscription-based business and your 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 terms change regularly. I don't know if you've ever gotten an email from like Netflix or something and it's like, hey, our terms recently changed, here's the updates, da, 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 whatever. If you have that specifically on your client portal or even on your main website, but in this case, client portal, you have your agreement or your policy or whatever and you're able to dynamically kind of send that out in a way, that's an interesting idea. Honestly, I haven't implemented the agreements thing. I'm just giving you an idea there. Maybe we'll get to it if we have enough uh, suggestions and, and like an idea on how exactly we would want to see it implemented. But it is another idea that I thought of because it would be kind of cool to have those on the website. At, the, at minimum though, the, the agreements or the proposals and the statements of work for each one of the projects and orders and all that will be on there and they will be able to see that. The agreements section is, is a little different. It's what they're actually, it's more of the contract piece, not just the the uh, the scopes of, of what you're doing and everything. So it's something to think about. Policies is really standard. I mean, I just don't want to have specific pages for privacy policies in, in terms of use and everything. That's kind of like outside. That's that's more of a general thing for every website. So I always have a policies uh, custom post type, and then I have like slash policies, and then it'll be privacy policy, terms of use, whatever. That's just pretty standard. We'll get to that. Uh, Term again is a great resource for that. I'll link them in the comments uh, or in the description down below. Uh, definitely great, great guys over there. Uh, and then articles. So I'll just show you articles real quick. I mean, again, depends on what you want to do with your with your client portal. It depends on how deep you want to get and everything like that. But if you if you like, you know, have a section where you need help, what do you need help with? This one is 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 interesting because it depends on where you want this. Do you want this on your main website? Do you want this on whatever? If if it's if your portal starts to get kind of vast and your and your people are actually in this and interacting heavily, then you probably want something like this where they can they can have like how do I cancel my support plan? How do I especially depending on how hands off you want to be, right? How do I update my payment method? How do I do this? It's very nice to just have like a little thing here where it's like how do I update my payment method? And it's like great. And then honestly, you can go all, more of the Google way, if you will, where like in here, it could be log into your file. They're already in there, okay? Then hover over the account, then payment methods. A lot of times Google will literally put a link directly to like account right in the support article thing, right? So then they, they click that and instead of even doing the stuff, they, they, they're they already logged in. So they have access to that page. They just click and they go to it. That's why I think on the inside of the portal makes a little more sense because then they could just ask questions and do that. And this right now is with Jet Search, like an Ajax search to 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 um, ask, uh, you know, whatever the questions are. And there's only a few articles in here right now, but like that's another option to see, you know, however you uh, kind of want to do that. And then if we go to the Help Center here, this is again, you can search for the things, you can get the quick answers and everything like that. And then down here, this we'll talk about this right now, and it's related to all of this. It's not data architecture, but I, I'm I'm, I'm kind of excited to show you this. This is a form which we'll build with WS form, but this is a form that dynamically shows them only the websites that they're associated with. Meaning that if if whoever is logged in here, right? First of all, this data is di is default in here. So they could change it, but they don't they don't even have to, right? And then so it's automatically loaded up regardless of who it is, John Doe, whatever. And then this thing is a is actually a jet uh, jet form builder feature currently where you generate the the things dynamically. You generate the Based on a relationship, you generate the websites that are associated with this specific logged in user dynamically. So this drop down here only shows, it only shows the websites that are related with my user. Again, it's a, it's it's incredible. It's a super small detail, but it's incredible that that you're able to do that. So that's something. And then you can up, upload like you know if you want to if you however you want to schedule this um, 
to do this. If, if a lot of you guys are probably going to want support requests, so we'll make sure we can do that. Where there's contact us to to fill out a support request, whatever kind of fields and information you want there. They submit the project, and then you can have that project automatically even just become a task. You can have it in a queue or something like that. We'll talk about all that, but that's all related to uh, everything that we talked about here in this whole uh, web of data architecture. Okay, so I really appreciate you sticking with me through all this talking. I know this was a huge talking video, but again, I feel like this is one of those things where it's just one of those conversations that needs to happen, needs to take place before we actually start diving in and doing a lot of the, the data work. Um, because without this, you don't know where you're headed. What I would say for you is the homework is to pick one of these approaches or create your own and kind of have that idea before you start following along with how we're actually going to start building each one of these things and really getting familiar with the tools. I mean, if you understand the, the logic behind the data here, you could even start right away. The other video will absolutely be up while this when this video is published, so look out for that. It'll be the next one in the playlist, but we're going to start diving into these. We're going to start looking into the users field or the users roles and everything like that. We're going to start looking into the uh, building out each one of these different custom post types and starting to build those relationships and everything. That's the fun part because then we can start to actually see some things happen and uh, see things getting related and all that. So I'm really excited. I hope you guys are too. Again, thank you so much for the support and um, let's keep rocking and rolling here. So I will talk to you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.